Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday, August 26th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. This is newly minted Tropical Depression 9. This is formerly Invest 99L, which we discussed in yesterday's video. We've seen some pretty significant evolutions of this disturbance since yesterday, and in the last 24 hours, the forecast for this system has been evolving in fairly rapid fashion, so everyone should be paying attention to this as it is now developing and moving into an area of the northwestern Caribbean where we're going to see the Cayman Islands and western Cuba taking some rough weather over the next couple of days. Finding the center of this system has been a little bit difficult. We've talked about how this was a broad wave axis yesterday that moved toward the northwest during the last 24 hours, and where it is centered is currently a question. We've got a pretty broad envelope of elliptical shaped circulation over this entire region of the Caribbean, some north wind here, and you can see it curling around to south southwest wind here and then going up toward Jamaica. And at this point, it's unclear exactly how this rounds off on the northern side. If we look at the high resolution loop, we'll find a couple of things here. If we're just looking at surface level clouds, we'll find that here's the northerlies right there. So that's where the this air is wrapping around on the west side. And if you look right about here, there's not a lot of motion right there. And that could be kind of the center of the wave axis at the low levels. There's strong southerlies over here. And a big question mark is what's going on just to the southwest of Jamaica. If you look visually without my overlay, you'll see that there is some kind of semblance of rotation to the eye. And this is a very strong mid-level circulation from what we can tell on satellite imagery. And you'll actually see some clouds wrapping around from the northwest at the mid-levels around whatever this is. It's unclear how far toward the surface this extends. And right now it may be that we have kind of a broad surface trough offset to the southwest of a vigorous mid-level circulation. And at this point, it becomes a question of will the mid-level circulation burrow to the surface, so to speak, and form a surface low stacked underneath that then moves on close to Grand Cayman and on toward Cuba. If that's what happens, then the track for this has shifted significantly to the northeast from what we were talking about yesterday, where we thought it might still be centered kind of down here and going toward the Yucatan Peninsula. So this would represent a significant shift. And at this point, uh, the National Hurricane Center has determined that this is organized enough to be called a tropical depression, and so they are initiating advisories as of just a few minutes before this video was made. And this is going to continue now and potentially bring tropical storm conditions to the Cayman Islands because there is very strong wind on the back side of this, and we're getting strong rains and wind gusts in Jamaica, and those will continue moving on toward the Northwest Caribbean over the next couple of days. This is the water vapor satellite loop showing the upper level flow around the system and we'll see that there is outflow expanding anticyclonically outward. These cirrus clouds moving away from the center of this tropical depression and we talked about this upper level trough that's kind of weakening to the west. Very broad upper level trough bringing some westerly wind across Belize and then southwesterly wind across Cuba. A little bit of southwesterly shear is present in the vicinity of TD9, uh, but this upper level trough is weakening and gradually moving westward. And so the expectation remains that wind shear will not be a significant limitation. It could uh, hamper organization initially over this part of the Caribbean, uh, but it is not expected to prevent significant development. Now this is the GFS and there's been, a, as I say, a lot of change in how models are interpreting this system as we've seen it start to consolidate more toward the northern end of the wave axis, uh, a lot more than even the models thought yesterday. Now this is the GFS mid-level moisture plot showing where it thinks TD9 should be centered right now, somewhere to the southwest of Jamaica. You can see the big moisture ball extending to the northeast. And compared to a couple of runs ago yesterday, it was down here. And so we've seen more of a focusing toward this northern end of the wave much more in the last few model runs. Now, the GFS thinks this mid-level center will uh, form a surface low in rather quick fashion tonight as it moves toward Grand Cayman, and we have a strengthening tropical storm by that time. And as this moves toward the northwest, it continues intensifying as it nears western Cuba. Now, this will be a very key point, whether it actually looks like this, whether that mid-level center actually develops into a compact surface circulation that immediately 
starts intensifying upon moving toward Cuba, that will be a key realization if we can determine whether that's actually happening. An aircraft reconnaissance mission will check out the storm in several hours after this video, and we may get more detailed information, and the storm may also move within range of the Cayman Island radar, which will hopefully give us a better picture of whether the storm is actually rotating in a compact way at the surface. If it is, then we could indeed see a strengthening tropical storm that is compact and has a strong tight wind field that could bring strong gusts to the Cayman Islands in western Cuba, and then a crossing over into the Gulf of Mexico will ensue. Now at this point, it's worth noting that the GFS is now the most northerly of all the model solutions. Many are still a little bit farther south here toward the Yucatan Channel and the western tip of Cuba, and given that we're still trying to find exactly where this is trying to center, uh, there is still some ambiguity here in the short-term track, so a rapidly evolving situation is something that folks in these islands should be tracking closely and assume that it'll come right over you at this point and bring those tropical storm conditions to where you are, because right now it's a little bit of a difficult storm to follow at this particular time. Now as this continues over into the Gulf of Mexico, this is pretty far north on the GFS now, and if I just show you the last several runs from the last couple of days, you'll see just how dramatically this has changed. We were talking about the Yucatan Channel the last time I made a video with uh, this GFS data. You can see how far this is shifting just because of where the formation location is. And we talked about how before formation, that ambiguity and where the storm consolidates can be a big source of uncertainty. This is perhaps one of the more dramatic examples of that that we're seeing unfold before us today in the Northwest Caribbean. Now, this track continues northwest, and what we have is a strengthening hurricane on this particular model crossing the central Gulf of Mexico. And the reason we have it moving northwest and strengthening is if we look at the upper levels, we have this ridge centered just off North Carolina. We talked about this yesterday. This part of the forecast has not changed. And so we're expecting that wherever this launches from, so to speak, in the Gulf of Mexico, whether it's here or whether it was still over here, the overall motion was going to be northwest either way because of this steering ridge. So if this crosses Cuba now, like it does on the GFS, the track is still going to be oriented more toward the west. So a, a key point here is that this will not be recurving into Florida, for example, given that this ridge is here. And we are going to see a northwestward motion wherever it enters the Gulf. And unfortunately, this continues to direct this just toward basically Louisiana on this particular run. Again, a note here is that the GFS is the farthest north model, so I'm using it kind of as an example, but if I show you the European instead, it is a little bit farther south here and ends up moving a little bit farther west. Again, this ridge is still here on that model as well. And so this general motion toward the central Gulf Coast is now espoused on most of these model forecasts. Again, if you compare this to a couple of model runs ago, you know, a lot of the tracks were more toward even northern Mexico or the central and upper Texas coast. We're seeing a lot of models shift now more toward Louisiana as a potential landfall point in the United States because the, again, the launching point here is much farther to the northeast than we were talking about even just a day or two ago. And so the difference now is instead of potentially moving toward Texas, that same motion, exact same motion, is now more toward the central Gulf Coast on some of these model runs. So again, this is a rapidly evolving forecast. Another key point here is that, for example, on the European model, this is 0Z Monday would mean Sunday evening, uh, Eastern time. And on the GFS as well, we're talking about impacts to land as early as Sunday morning, 12Z Sunday would be 8 a.m. Eastern time, 7 a.m. Central. So this could be a very quickly evolving storm over the weekend and much faster timeline than we were talking about even a day or two ago. So all of these changes again are rapid and so I'm enumerating them in great length now so that you take this in because the forecast uh, is now one that is a little bit concerning for the central Gulf Coast. Now here's the H-War forecast from 6C just to show you kind of a depiction of how this could evolve. Uh, it shows a pretty decent initialization of how broad this likely is. I showed you this long looping trough here. h -Wharf does see that in this model run and we see some sort of concentration here to the southwest of Jamaica. And it stays broad for a little while and then later this evening and tonight we start to see a more compact circulation form underneath that mid-level circulation. Again, it's all about whether this here is able to burrow toward the surface and form a compact surface wind field. On h -wharf, that does start to happen by Friday morning as this is moving through the Cayman Islands. 
And as this moves toward Western Cuba, we have a bonafide tropical storm here. And it seems kind of unlikely that we would get a hurricane this quickly. Uh, but then again, if the surface wind field is tight, we could see something that is strengthening with a, a quick pace as it's moving Western Cuba. And so a bonafide tropical storm warning here and stiff tropical storm conditions are certainly possible here. So strong winds, elevated winds are likely and heavy rains, of course, through this whole region. Uh, but we're unlikely to see something particularly strong yet as this has little time left over the Northwest Caribbean before entering into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, once this crosses over into the Gulf, we'll see that this continues intensifying and becomes a hurricane over the central Gulf. And the reason it's continuing to intensify is if we look at the upper level wind pattern, again, we have this upper level trough to the west of the system. And for, for a little while, there's a little bit of southwesterly shear there due to the southerly flow aloft. Now, as the system moves, into the Gulf, it starts to shove this upper level trough aside and this trough continues to weaken here. This upper level trough begins to disappear and its influence on the storm wanes a little bit. So TD9 finds itself under light southeasterly flow aloft, which is also aligned with its track motion and the lower level flow. And so this is not a tremendous amount of shear here. This is less than 10 to 15 knots and this curving outflow anticyclonically outward from the center is a situation that is in general favorable for intensification. One wrinkle in the forecast that may come into play is we do have a storm developing over the Eastern Pacific. So you'll see if, if I track back here, you'll see outflow exploding outward from this. And as I go forward, you'll see that expanding into the Southwestern Gulf of Mexico. One thing to kind of look for here in the hope is that this outflow is able to expand enough that it kind of shoves what's left of this upper level trough over top of TD9 and kind of forces a little bit of southerly shear into the situation because of this bubble expanding eastward. There's high uncertainty on that. Models have been trying to figure out the East Pacific storm over the last couple of days, and they've been struggling with that too. So we're not entirely sure, but indications currently uh, point to the environment being fairly favorable for TD9 as it goes into the Gulf, and the likelihood is that nothing will be hostile enough to prevent intensification into a hurricane. That's the current expectation here. One thing that I'm watching for that is a little bit concerning is the potential for the storm to move over this warm deep eddy of the Gulf of Mexico loop current that is typically sitting here at this time of year. This is an anticyclonically turning body of water that is very warm to a great depth and if a strengthening hurricane moves over that that's the kind of thing that could induce quick intensification in the final day prior to moving toward the Gulf Coast and that's just something to point out because the likelihood at this point is that we do have a strengthening hurricane moving across the Gulf. And so this is a situation where folks should be watching this very closely. The first NHC forecast is out now just before this video was made, showing that track into western Cuba and across the Cayman Islands with tropical storm warnings for both areas. And again, we could see some intensifying winds, perhaps a little stronger at Cuba than at the Cayman Islands, not expecting a hurricane here, but expecting a strengthening hurricane over the Gulf as this continues northwestward. Now again, yesterday we didn't have an NHC forecast, but the consensus track from the modeling was more toward Texas. Today we've seen this market shift toward the northeast, and we could see some further adjustments. It's unlikely to go significantly farther eastward from here, but if the system is a little bit farther east over Cuba, you know, we could be talking about more eastern Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. And if it's a little bit more toward the Yucatan Channel, you know, we could still be bringing the upper Texas coast into play. So there's still a wide area where the landfall could potentially occur here. And we'll be ironing out those details once we see exactly where this is near western Cuba. At the moment, again, it's still kind of sloppy, still waiting to see if it actually consolidates under here or if something a little bit broader over here becomes the focus over the next 12 to 24 hours. The bottom line here is that the National Hurricane Center is forecasting a strengthening hurricane, and most models agree on this. This is a pretty high confidence forecast that conditions will be favorable and a significant hurricane is likely here. The maximum winds are currently forecast to be about 110 miles per hour on this first forecast. And it's important not to focus on the details of that number. The important part is that it's a strong hurricane on this forecast, winds greater than 100 miles per hour, and that number may be adjusted up and down depending on exactly how quickly this comes together near Cuba. Faster would mean stronger. Taking its time to come together would mean perhaps a little weaker, but it's likely to be significant either way. And so this is something that folks should be taking seriously here and getting their plan of action ready to execute just in case the storm starts making a move 
in your direction. So if you're in the central Gulf Coast, you should be following this closely and staying tuned to hurricanes.gov for updates, and your local National Weather Service will start talking about it today as well. And local details will be coming from them as we start to narrow down on the landfall point. Again, impacts could be occurring as soon as Sunday on the central Gulf Coast. So this is an accelerated timeline that folks should be paying attention to and make sure you're prepared. That's it for now. I'll have another update tomorrow. Thanks for watching.